swept away, swept away Ah, I'm cornered in the cold where you left me Left again, left again a rookie move it was a rookie move i for for those of you who do not hang out with us often (laughs) hello and welcome back to the test studio uh i let ken and some of his friends play around with the test studio space and i'm usually like right last minute for this event so all my stuff was moved around (laughs) i apologize that we were a couple minutes late there was like some kind of looks like a photo shoot there's like some fun photo equipment uh, like out ahead with some like backdrops so i don't know what was happening but Exciting stuff here, here in the test studio space. But I had to move the light, Doc. How does my? I feel like my light is off. I've messed up my, my light positioning. Everything. Is you look great. Good. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, well, I think you look good. Would, this is actually great for today's topic because we're talking about planning. And as a as a Type A personality, <laughs> hanging out with my planner extraordinaire friend, I I feel like. <laughs> Knowing what your space is like, and one of the reasons why I've loved this space so much is that it has been so easy to just walk in, literally flick the switches on, and I'm ready to go, and everything is already built out and planned out. So today threw me for a loop. So this is really why planning is so important. <laughs> you know, I was thinking today, um, so I was a guest um, on Junaid's project this week about the home studio makeover, yep. makeover, yep. mastery, something like that. Yeah. And... <laughs> if if you feel like you have a ton of potential in your space, but it's just kind of like not put together yet and you have all these intentions, but like stuff's just like not put together, volunteer to be a guest speaker on something and it's going to <laughs> force you to get your act together, uh, which is exactly what my week has been like. But it's but it's good because I'm like, OK, I, I've I literally my floor was just covered in gear. <laughs> And all sorts of things that are like super expensive. And then also like, why am I still holding on to this? Like, why do I have five journals? I don't journal, (laughs) but I just keep compulsive. Anyways, so in terms of planning, um, and this is really a good tip for people with ADHD, uh, like c'est moi that's not that's not correct (laughs) french but it's is it yeah that's good enough (laughs) um it's really good like we work really well under pressure and if something is urgent it gets done it becomes the priority in our brain so um locking yourself into being a guest speaker or presenter on something that you know you can do but you just have to get your act together so do that yeah. Because now my space is finally more or less how I want it. And yeah, it hasn't and it makes, looked like this in a long time. It makes a big difference. Uh, I'm just going to do some shout outs to those who are yeah. coming out here. Looks like we have Luis and Timothy Sammy's in the house. We have David and Fulgens. The whole team. Look at these is heavy here. hitters. Uh, DJ Right on Beat is hanging out. I'm sorry. I didn't use the Ecamm Fam Jam today. I got I got thrown off, Rob. <laughs> I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Glenda's here. We have Doc Rock. We have Johnny hanging out. 
Um, and I wanted to point out too. So yeah, a, a lot going on, a lot going on the first month and nine days here in the, in the ECAM <laughs> space. Uh, so if you're not keeping up or you have a serious case of whiplash, you can always find out what's going on and grab any replays if you're like team replay by swinging over to the video hub. So videos.ecam.com for any moderators who want to drop the link into the comments for us. Um, but yeah, videos.ecam.com is where we are housing all of our all of our videos and it's really easy to search and find everything there. You can also grab everything here on the YouTube channel. Most of our videos are here as well since since you're already here. But if you want to be able to search and, <laughs> and find some things. But yeah, Jill, um, Jill's been involved with Junaid is doing an entire like home studio crash course master class, everything you need to know. It's completely free. And if you, you know, if you missed the beginning of it or midweek, no problem. Replays are always available. <laughs> Replays are always available for you to catch up. But it's a, it's a great chance to kind of show some before and after. Definitely drop those into the community or share them with each other and with us. We'd love to just see like what your space is looking like now, where you want to get to. And, and so we can help you take those steps. But yeah, Jill, you're like, we're, killing it in the studio in the studio bell series i love it Woo! Yeah. so it's funny i was i was asked to focus on audio mm -hmm. so if you go back and look at day three which is today yep. um and watch the audio i oh, i don't have my overhead camera on right now but oh my god i did like a demo today of i think eight different uh, microphones and like ranging from super expensive complicated setup to like a uh, shotgun mic different yeah. lav mics um us different types of usb mics it was a crap ton of planning and oh my god i love my mac mini and i have my cal digit which gives me more usbs i maxed everything out so i had to like, use so two legs. extras so, so so many yeah but it, but it was cool. It was kind of fun to be able to walk through each one. And here's how this sounds. This is how I would use this. And so the planning, um, I am not type A. Wait, wait, which way are you? There you go. I am not type A. Yeah. But my creative ADHD brain does organize things. And I, I, get, I get really focused on details. But sometimes it's kind of like this. And people like you are really good for me because it'll be like, okay, well, what about like, let's take all of that and then focus it in this way. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, actually, what are we doing? <laughs> actually, what are we doing? I, and I will say I was taking like copious notes the other day. If you're playing along, you'll notice that I, I tend to just to feature, <laughs> to highlight live streams and creators that serve my own needs and purposes <laughs> as I'm yeah. building out my space. So yeah. if you're if you're like me and you're learning as you go, um, you can join me as I force all of my friends and, <laughs> and professional <laughs> contacts to share their brilliance with us. Uh, but earlier this week, we had um, two, two live streams that are available on replay on our YouTube channel right now that are worth shouting out. Um, and I see that they popped up in the in the comments as well. One is uh, Adrian and his son Owen, and one of our like amazing creators, Greg Foot. They joined uh, on Unfulgence for a really special ENN uh, yesterday. It's all a blur. Yesterday, <laughs> Tuesday, and they were talking about like a huge production that they were doing and all wow. the planning that went into it. And what I really loved was that Greg was kind enough to share like his like. Full, I think it was a Google Doc, but what you know, whatever you use, Word Doc or any kind of plan, planner, if you if you're a physical planner. <laughs> but it was brilliant because we talk a lot about like the run of show and kind of thinking through ecam scenes and how you're building everything out. But this was like one step before that, which I'm sure you've done, Jill, a bunch mm -hmm. of where, like it was literally like you know, okay. You know, I want to be me on camera first, and then I want to like go over to our interview guest, and then. Owen was, you know, actually the one who was behind behind the computer producing everything. So it was like everything for like that Owen needed to know was like highlighted in yellow. So it was like over to yeah. you, Owen, I need you to change that scene. So it was really just like being able to whiteboard it out in, in a mm -hmm. way that kind of flowed all the way through and use that then to give to other team members because Greg was just on camera. He wasn't yeah, playing with any <laughs> playing with any of the gear or the toys, and you had Adrian and Owen who were behind the scenes actually driving the show, and and then there were mm -hmm. a, a number of remote guests, so it was a really big production. And I think sometimes we forget that some of those bigger productions might require like the step up above <laughs> above the run of show, the full planning document, especially if you're doing something with other with other team members. So it's not just you. Helpful for you as the yeah planner, but I'm sure also helpful 
for all the type A people <laughs> who are involved in the production who want to be able to know exactly like, okay, when, when are they doing what and how is it flowing through and something to follow along with as the production itself was happening. So it was super helpful to kind of see that laid out. Um, do you, do you, oh, someone's saying my mic is a lot louder than yours. I'm going to pull mine down a bit yeah. if you want to pull your mic up a bit. All right. How are we now? How are we now? How are we now? I don't know in comparison. Test, 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 test. <laughs> Thank you, DJ Red I'm just so, the comments for a second. I have, um, so I, I do different productions. Um, last year I worked with three or four people, um, depending on uh, availability, to do live streaming sports. So mm -hmm. I, what I, I actually, if I can share my screen, yeah, go for I it. can show you some of the practical um, things that I use mm -hmm. to kind of stay organized. Yeah, Let's let see, me I'm do it fly this over. Um, oh, you know what? I don't even have an extra scene built. One sec. One sec. Katie. I know. You know what? I'm going to build scenes on the go. We're going to build scenes on the go. It's going to be a copy of the interview. Look, watch, watch everyone. And I'm going to, I'm going to remove myself. What? <laughs> Where what? Katie go? So remove all these beautiful Type A person. <laughs> And then um, Neil's to... asking, Jill's audio is really nice and clean. Oh, mm. um, any processing in a chain or straight into Ecamm? So, Neil, my setup is this Shure, I always forget the letters and numbers, SM7B. B? I should know yeah. that by now. Oh, I just moved on. And then this is going into a um, cloud lifter. And then my audio interface is the Wave XLR. And then that's into the computer USB. And then and then there you go. Yeah. So no processing or anything else. All right. I'm going to make your screen as big as possible. Here. I think All it's right, me. Feel free to, feel free to share your screen. We're keeping some of the pink. <laughs> so I have I have it as shared screen oh, yep. through Ecamm. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I, can, I can do it a different way. No, no, you're good. Boop. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to show you a couple documents that were kind of working documents for Perfect. us. So what I needed to do was um, I'm working with volunteers and people outside of my organization. So it was important for us in this collaboration to just define roles. And again, this is for live streaming sports. So I just, okay, here are the names of the roles and this is what they do. Um, because if you don't have this, it's kind of People can also feel weird. You can make the dynamic strange. Oh, look, there's me. <laughs> Katie building these amazing scenes. So, hey, guys, now you can see me and hear me and see my stuff. The magic. Okay, wow. I'm so obnoxious. So anyways, so having a checklist like this that simply defines roles and responsibilities, what happens before the game, who does what, what happens during the game, how early should people arrive, and then the post-production what needs to happen, like changing names on the file. So I'm going to show you some of this other stuff. But literally having something kind of generic like this, if you know you're going to be collaborating with someone for an in-person event or even an online event, laying out the roles. You will use this and duplicate this and change the phrasing. And so having something like this, I'm happy to share this if people think it's it's helpful. I'm going to show you another little document. Okay, so let's see. I don't think you need to see that yet. So something like <laughs> this is also potentially very helpful. So for me, um, as a visual learner and as a someone that taught ESL for 11 years, I liked to be able to physically show the equipment and then um, label them all out. Yes, yeah, so if you could just scoot me over a, a scotch, <laughs> that would be great, Katie. Thank you so much. Um, her moving my camera is also in her job description yeah, exactly. uh, that I'm, we I'm shared there. earlier. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> so, so having something like this where you can visually show like, here's everything listed, but also have a quick visual reminder, I think can be helpful. Um, this went over to a second page for hockey. <laughs> Katie, if you could go ahead and move me into that gap. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great. So actually tonight I'm going to be helping to live stream a hockey game. <laughs> Why are we such dorks? That's okay. Um, 
So yeah, what is Jill using stickies from since the 1994? <laughs> I love it. Hey, don't be mean about stickies now. Stickies are great. Listen. These are these are super helpful because the thing that's really important to remember in this is that even though we us group here are um, incredible mm-hmm. at Ecamm Live, not everyone is in the software. Not everyone has any idea what any of this is, and so having a visual is super helpful for team members who are never going to be touching a computer who just want to be able to kind of see the big picture. It's also probably really right. helpful when you're selling a like a, a, as part of a pitch deck, right? Like pitching into yes. some of these um into these options, but so it's it's so if I ever twofold. had to validate <laughs> um like if someone was like, "Oh, you're just live streaming hockey or you're just doing this." Like I hate that just word by the way. It <laughs> triggers me. Um but anyone that's like, "Oh, well, it's just this." Like, why do you why do we need to put aside so much money to go ahead and do these things? Showing them the behind the scenes of the, the PowerPoint of like, "Here's all the equipment that we need to make things run smoothly." Like the live stream was seamless, right? There was no distractions, there was no terrible audio, there was no weird transitions or dead time. Everything just flowed, right? You weren't distracted. Well, if it flowed and you weren't distracted, that means it was a great production. And and that means that there was a ton of time and effort and planning that went into doing that. One yeah. thing that we did um, that was listed in the responsibilities was like we would go back after the game and we'd fill in, okay, what's the final score? Who were the people? Who were the camera operators? Who did the play-by-play? And that's also really helpful for when you're doing live events. I'm going to stop sharing now. Yep. Um, nice. When when you're doing live events and you want to be able to give credit back in the description, like there's going to be things that come up today potentially where someone's like, Oh, what's that microphone or what's this? And we're going to say, Oh yeah, let, let, we'll add it into the description later. Yeah. And your mind might be able to remember that oh, this guy, Sometimes. not so much. <laughs> so I literally on my desktop, Oh yeah, they were making fun of my little sticky notes. Oh my yeah. God. I seriously had no idea what they're talking about. So yeah, like that's, part of my planning too you know like i i like to i see something and i gotta write it down real quick so that's what they're talking about oh my god how about i had no idea yeah no i um i wish that i was as organized as that it's so funny i like i whatever is in front of me when i think of a genius idea is what, is what ends up getting like whether it's like a, a physical sticky note or it might be like i have slack open so i'll just like send myself a slack note or it's like i have email open so i would just like type a draft email it's like things to remember later and then i go at the end of the day and kind of collect all of those and put them back into a project management tool or um, yeah or something so i can not not forget them later but yeah i i think it there's so many different sides that go into planning productions no matter what the scale is and it's really important yeah. to remember that some of that planning is for you as the as the producer some of that planning is for whoever is on screen some of it is for you know pitching and getting you know, getting that that actual project of approved and through so there's there's a ton of different layers of it and some are things you can use with an ecam and, and some are just things you should have outside of that so it's yeah it is important to think through all of that and um and make sure that you do have a plan for every production you're doing, no matter what the sign, what the size of it is, right? Absolutely. And being a real respecter of everyone's time mm-hmm. is huge. Like, there's different productions. Like you and I, we know each other well. We know that we we don't have to have everything listed out, and yeah. um, like we don't have to have. I can't even think of the word. Like an outline an of outline, what exactly yeah. what we're going to talk about. Yep. But if if you were asking me to speak about something specific, mm-hmm. and you're like, "Hey, Jill, I really want you to lean into this." It's important to give your guest um, a heads up and be really specific um, because whether you go over everything or not, that's that's fine, but it's better to have more information. It's also really important for the guest to know where to find the information. So like, yeah. for example, yeah. I've been in different, yep. <laughs> you know, I've been in different events where all of the communication was just done on Facebook Messenger. And mm-hmm. honestly, I do not like that. Because for me, Facebook is like where I drop funny pictures of my kids. And then it's the avenue. It's what I log into to yep. access my groups. Yep. But I don't use messaging like that. Yep. So if if I'm being a guest, I, I would want to be asked, hey, what's the best way to communicate? What's going to be the most effective yep. way? I think email is like emailing out a detail. Like who does a really good job of this? Um, DJ Strick and Brant. Yeah. They, Kirk is another one that does a great job Kirk, with it. There's oh a lot yeah. Of, yeah. Kirk was really mm-hmm. good. So like 
events like that, if you can say, hey, a reminder, this is what we're doing. This is what I'd like you to send me over if you can. Um, this is when you should hop on live. This is when we're going to do our mic check. Like over communicating in a non bossy way is really helpful and will put your guest at ease and it'll make the process easier. If I have to go and search for how we're supposed to do stuff or we're already streaming and then I forgot, oh man, like you and I have a system where like if something goes wrong right now, we can use Ecamm's guest chat to talk. Yeah. But I can also, I also have your cell phone and I can text you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you Absolutely. have to have those things in place yep. or else it's embarrassing and frustrating. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's worth your time as a guest. Yeah. And I, and the other thing I will say, and again, um, Kirk and Branton Strick are also amazing at this. And we'll drop, if you, if you don't know who those three folks are, we will drop their shows um, and information about them into the description afterwards. I promise. I promise I'll remember. <laughs> I have it. Let me put it on my sticky. In. <laughs> Jill's putting on the sticky note. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the one, the other thing that they do, which many of you, I'm sure, um, are leveraging, is they have like they have a a calendar tool, like a Calendly.com, for mm -hmm. example, where it sends it sends those guests reminders and everything, like all of the information, the call in link, you know, the questions that they're going to ask during the interview, the link to where the show is, the promotional assets if the guest wants to help promote, all of that is in one place and it's all tied to the calendar invite because yes. I mean, even the most organized of us, um, you know, we, we are doing lots of different things and, you know, especially if you're, if you're a guest on a show, it's nice. You, you are living and breathing by that calendar invite. It's helping to remind you where you need to be and when. And so having yeah. it right there within the calendar invite to be like, Oh, right. That's right. I have all the questions. I, you know, I know when the, the sound check is, I know where the link is. It, it helps to remind them to take all those important steps and it gives them that sense of of confidence that they're going to be able to come on. They know what the flow of the show is. They know how long the commitment is. They know, you know, yes. it's going to be an hour long show or it's going to be 40 minutes or whatever it is. You're setting those expectations up front. It's just so hugely important as a producer for sure. Yep. And um, you know who else does a great job of that? Uh, JP High Tech does yeah. a great job of that. Yep. And what he, he goes above and beyond by creating all of the digital assets to share. Mm -hmm. So like if I was a guest with him, he would send me, okay, here's the link to share. Here's a thumbnail. Here's yep. something for your, and he didn't say, Hey, listen, I'm checking your Instagram and you didn't help it. <laughs> yeah. But he's made like, it easy. made it easy a hundred percent. So, um, yeah, shout out to JP because I've been a guest with him a couple of times, one-on-one -on -one and then in a group. And, and I felt, um, very comfortable and confident and at ease and then wicked freaking nervous because if you've ever seen his productions it's, it's like <laughs> they are they a are, lot they're intense and you feel um, like you're on tv yeah you so. do you feel yeah intense in a good way i mean yeah it definitely yes, feels like yes. television qual television quality production so i and yeah. yeah and you know being able to to have that i think goes a really long way it's a differentiator for his shows people know have that level of quality and there's an, again another expectation there um yeah i want to talk a little bit about uh, pitches which is a little bit uh, topic adjacent but i think it's yeah. important to cover with this group is i i know you know stephanie is a good example of someone that does this i know um ivan does a bit of this as well but they're you know the concept of being able to leverage ecams scenes and profiles even to kind of build out the flow of that show with all of the graphics with you know everything that you need to know in advance and then be able to export that and send that over to another team member or even you know have that ready to walk through when you are doing a tech check or when you're pitching into a client like gives you that level of kind of professionalism and authority that yeah. they're not likely to see anywhere else. So it's not like, trust me, the show is going to be amazing. Here are some past examples of things I've done. It's no, I've like gone through and have scoped out, you know, a, a run of show for what this show is going to look like. Yes. And let me take you through it. You know, Ecamm's placeholders make that really easy to kind 100%. of you could populate in like photos or you could populate in so that they understand what the feel is going to be like like this, you know, like we're going to be side by side. We're going to have our names and amazing titles beneath us. We're going to, you know, yes. we're going to have this, this flow of, of production. And this is the production quality that I'm bringing to you being able yep. to leverage that or send those along to different members of your team in advance so that everyone has a copy in case your computer dies or you're not able to be the one that's there to drive yeah. the show. Those kinds of steps are really super helpful in planning as well. Yeah. And it's quick, 
and not to sound like an infomercial, but <laughs> with Ecamm, it's quick and easy. It's seamless. <laughs> well, here, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to go into I'm going to go into infomercial mode. No, I'm going to go into live, to live demo mode. But I just wanted to be able to show, and I think I've showed this previously. These scenes, by the way, are 100% given to us because we are friends with the most amazing people. So on Infulgence designed these all for us. Um, in the, and they, you know, they do a ton of these. So you can either learn how to do these, but you'll see, like, look, I, you know, I have my scenes all built out. These are the building blocks overlays. And it lets me be able to easily flow through waiting screen back over to our main interview and everything is labeled and built out. So that's great for me yeah. actually flowing through the show, but it's also great if I wanted to just export. So if I wanted to come down here and click to save, <laughs> save my interview, I could export that out and I could send that over to Jill and, you know, God forbid I'm on a plane and I'm late or, you know, something horrible happens. I'm not able to actually do the show. Jill could jump in and do it for me, or Jill could send those files over to someone else on the team. So having a, a mm -hmm. backup saved somewhere else or being able to use those to flow through things, it, more than just building a run of show, there's a lot that you can do in this prep stage to be able to inspire confidence both in yourself, in your team, <laughs> for the client, for you know, for whatever whatever steps you have along the way as you're building your production. Absolutely. So I gotta tell <laughs> oh, you, I'm oh, wait, I wait. um <laughs> but wait, I know I saw that too. I didn't want to interrupt you, but that was no, it's good. For only three payments of five ninety nine. Yeah, we're not you selling too. you guys on ecam. <laughs> we're selling all you friendly people on how to be better at building production. So, so here we are. Um, I was going to say one thing, but now I want to jump to something else in terms of planning productions. Um, one important thing, if you're doing a multi-team member mm -hmm. uh, live event, uh, not virtual, but live in-person event, yeah. um, it's super important to, you know, you've, you've got your communication ahead of time. Everybody knows their role, but you've got to find a way to talk to each other. <laughs> and so if you, if you, if you're on a budget, um, what I've done is just literally have a phone call with AirPods or, or, or wireless um, yep. headphones and then just talk to each other, mm -hmm. being mindful of where a microphone might be. Yeah. So like, for example, <laughs> I, I live to tape using Ecamm the other day, um, winter concerts. Oh, yeah. How did a concert and go? Yeah. It, they went well. So we had we actually had four of them. Uh, there was a high school one. Mm -hmm. And then three middle school ones. So awesome. um, I did two of the three middle school ones with with a few team members. And so what I wanted to do was, you know, I had I had I controlled the main shot and I did mm -hmm. all the switching. And then I had two people that were on the other sides of the um, of the auditorium. Mm -hmm. So I needed to be able to talk to them to let them know, like, OK, wait, stay there. Push in here. You know what? Can you get me the conductor? Blah, blah, blah. blah. So yeah. I need to be able to direct them. And we had four different places that were recording audio because for a concert audio is super important and yep. we weren't live streaming. I wanted to be able to process things later and um, we didn't have a soundboard to mess with. So I couldn't steal the audio. Anyways, I'm saying all that to say um, last minute, I decided that the main audio, the best audio that I could get would be from a shotgun microphone. Mm -hmm. And so at first I was just put it on the main camera, which is right in front of me and then I'm like wait I need to direct everybody yeah, yeah. it's and gonna so, pick up all of my talking to all the people over there it is <laughs> yeah. and even though and this is actually the microphone that I used it's not plugged into any interface or whatever but even though this yep. microphone is designed to I had it on the um the tele tele teleprompter tele, well well the tele audio mode so basically oh, it's not gotcha. getting the whole room it's oh, focused gotcha, gotcha. in yep for far away. Mm -hmm. So even though I had on that setting, it would still pick up me. So right before they started, I quickly um, put it in between me and one of the other camera people yep. so that I could still quietly say. And then I was like, uh, we had headsets. So I, you know, they're, they're expensive, but we, they were helpful. So I just had the headset really close to me and then I would just talk to them like this. <laughs> but having those plans on how to communicate and those type of events, because you don't want to be like miming things. You, mm -hmm. It's important to be able to communicate. So having that plan is really, really important. Yeah. Yeah. And I, again, uh, 
I, and I know that we probably sound like a broken record in saying this because this applies to like literally every single recording or live stream or a video podcast, anything you're creating, whether it's just you by yourself or, you know, or what Jill and I are doing here or a huge production, it, having like doing a quick test, even if it's a couple of seconds, <laughs> goes a really yeah. long way to making sure that your audio is sounding right, that, you know, that the camera looks okay, that your, you know, your bandwidth is fine, that the platform yes. is like all of those different things. And if you can, I know, and I know we're guilty of this sometimes too, but if, if you're planning on live streaming, do a live test, <laughs> like go into a group, go to an unlisted YouTube, you know, anything yeah. that you can do to be able to actually test the live capabilities of it. We get questions all the time to our support team where they're like, you know, Oh, I like I did this live stream and everything went wrong and you know it was this huge really important production and now I'm you know now I, I've lost credibility or I've you know mm. I've lost you know I've lost a client or it's it was just you know this heartbreaking experience and yeah. I, you know our poor our poor team like our hearts are bleeding for you in the same way that you were feeling horrified by the entire experience and the only way to avoid that is to force yourself to do a tech check even if yeah. it's just you going live checking that out in advance. It may all look correct. It may look great while you're just kind of setting up and walking back and forth. Everything looks great. It could be totally different when you hit that live button or that yeah. record button. Um, everything could fall apart. So please, and please, I've please had, spend the time to do that. I have experienced that. And for those of you that have followed different videos that I've shared, I, sorry if I'm repeating myself, but <laughs> A big thing when you are live streaming on location um, mm -hmm. in a new location, especially school systems, government <laughs> buildings, and corporate settings. Yep. Even if you are plugged in via the Ethernet mm -hmm. or you've got the special Wi Fi connection and you've done your speed test, you're like, everything looks good. <laughs> I'm amazing. And <laughs> I am, I am so amazing. But you need to do a test stream because even if your internet's working, you've got great upload speeds, sometimes there are firewalls that block the pushing out of yep. your stream. Yep. So you can access YouTube, you can go on all sorts of sites, you've got all this access, but then when you hit live, you'll get this blue spinning wheel. It is not an Ecamm thing, <laughs> it is a firewall or some other yep. I P address tech thing. And yeah. I have I have had this issue multiple times um, on paid gigs and then on gigs that are part of my school job. And literally sometimes I just I have to go call the IT person and say, hey, quick, it's doing that thing. I still don't know exactly what the thing to do. But what they do is they take down my <laughs> IP address and they say, okay, all right, I'll give you permission. All right. So when you live stream from this location, you're good. Yeah. Until they update something behind yeah, the scenes until that's next way over my head. <laughs> exactly. And so what I've done now is every time I have to live stream um, I, I do a test live stream to my YouTube channel that I'm going to be going to as an unlisted video mm -hmm. and I just go live, double check and my live stream and then I'm good. But, um, that has caught me off guard. It, it's happened to me at least four times. Um, luckily I, I, I had backup plans and I figured out the first one I had like a workaround by doing YouTube and then pulling a virtual camera into YouTube and streaming from YouTube, not out through Ecamm. Mm -hmm. So I was still using Ecamm. But um, yeah, you don't want to do that. Don't just test your internet. Do yeah. a stream. Yeah. Um, actually, someplace. actually do a stream. If you can, and espe yes. especially if you have guests coming on, do, do a sound check, do a video check. It's going to help. Not only is it going to help you make sure that they look and sound great, but you, you will also see you know, how nervous they are. It'll give them a higher mm -hmm. level of confidence being able to have a rapport with you and understand like the kinds of questions you're going to ask. You'll find out if they're in their car or in a closet or they have terrible internet and you'll be able to make um, suggestions for them to be able to improve for next time. So that like it, it goes beyond just uh, internet quality and, and kind of the obvious yeah. things and goes really even into just the, the end production value of what you're creating and the level of confidence that your guests will feel, which really is going to mean like how, if you want them to be able to 
promote and be excited about their experience on your show, come back, recommend their cool, awesome friends to be yeah. able to be on your show. You want them to have as positive an experience as possible. So it may seem like you're asking for a lot to, you know, ask for them to come on a day early or a couple days early. It's not, it like, it really mm. will install that level of confidence in them and make you look much more professional along the way. A hundred percent. You, that is such a good point. Um, can I tell you a short story? Uh, <laughs> please tell us a short story. Please do. Story time with Jill. Um, <laughs> so I was working with a, a very important uh, political figure mm -hmm. on a project. Mm -hmm. And the first time I worked with him, I was really nervous. And it was all pre-recorded stuff. We weren't live streaming, but I was still really super duper nervous. Yeah, sure. And so I got him all mic'd up. And and I, I, I didn't over-direct him because I was intimidated. So what happened was I had the scene set up. There was a green screen. The lighting was good, but then he was so far Moved. away from the microphone. And then I had a I had a lens that was not perfect for this, but I had a I don't know if it was I don't think it was my signal. It wasn't a wide lens, but it was something in between. So basically, the farther he stepped away from the camera, the more his head looked like a little pinhead. Right. Oh, so no. that's not fun. Right. And so oh, no. I, I, I record him and there's a green screen and he got too close to the light. So like all of the things were bad. Okay. <laughs> it was a snowball and then, effect. <laughs> it was yeah. bad. It yep. was bad. But then I was, I was intimidated. I didn't know him well. And then I edited everything the best that I could and I made it look and sound better ish, but it still was not ideal. Yeah. Um, and I, I checked with one person that knew him well and they said, no, you know what? It's not that big of a deal of a production. It's just a small little intro. That's fine. Just leave it. Okay. So I left it. Because mm -hmm. I was too afraid to ask to do the project again. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, it it airs. It's just like an intro to a job fair thing, thanking mm -hmm. people. Blah 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 blah. He was so frustrated with me. He's Aww. like, "Why didn't you just tell me to come film it again? Why?" Did so I learned that the hard way. Mm -hmm. And now I still work with this person, and he can be a little little prickly, a little tough to work with sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. But I've learned that he respects me so much more when I'm more deliberate, when I'm yeah. more communicative and yeah. I have to push back. Um, when I push back with him a little bit, he might get annoyed in the moment, but then the when he sees that, you know what, can you take that line again? Let's go back and do that again. Can you yeah. say that one more time? You he's know invested. what, let me adjust this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he's gonna be annoyed with me in the moment, but then later on, he's gonna brag about the great production that I do yeah. and I've gotten more work from that connection because he values me as a producer and as someone yeah. that's taking the time. Now, luckily I don't have to have that same type of attitude and like, all right, we're doing it again. No, let's do it. Like I don't have to be like that with yeah. most of the people I work with. Mostly it's just, Hey, you know, all right, we're going to go ahead and practice the day before. Cause I want you to feel good. I want you to be able to be super confident and comfortable and like, most of the time it's just being a human being, being mm -hmm. thoughtful and being kind. But you were so right in all of your messaging about like doing all of those practices and those rehearsals will make your production better. And through that process, you're showing your guests that you respect them, yeah. that you want them to shine in the best way. Yeah. Um, and if they, if they have limitations and they can't meet you the day before, well, okay, I know we're going live at noon. Can we make sure that we get together at 1130? Will that work for you? Cause yeah, I did, you just know, like on right before. Yeah. And then at yes. least you can like, at least then you can make a call. Like if they jump on and yeah. everything is going wrong, at least you have the time to say, Hey, I don't think this is going to work out today in the way that, you know, that we expected it to, I'm going to reschedule yep. or, you know, I'm going to like, we're going to make these couple changes, but we're going to do a reshoot later. It gives, it gives you the ability to, to, make decisions without yes. the decisions being made for you. Right? Yes. We have yes. a question here from uh, Dr. Hugh wants to know what cameras we are using. This one here in front of me uh, is a Sony a6400 and it's got a Sigma 16 millimeter lens on it. Um, big fan of it. Doc Rock told me to buy it. So here we are. <laughs> well, speaking of Doc Rock, Doc Rock made me buy my camera too, you big turd, but I'm happy. But we did, look great really apparently. So, like <laughs> so that's what that is what matters. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for watching us, Dr. Hugh. It's so good to see you. If you're newer to, to video stuff, we do have a full um, gear guide that you can work your way through at most probably an overwhelming amount of different decisions. And really when it comes to cameras and microphones and lighting and all the different gear around you, there is a ton of different ways you can go and you should work your way through what makes sense for your budget and for your production mm -hmm. and what you're trying to accomplish. But Sony's are popular in our community right now. So here they are. Yes. 
I've got the ZVE10, which is now yep. no longer in production. I know. Hold on to that one. Everyone's after it. <laughs> I know. Alicia Way is going to like buy a seventh one, you know, just to okay, know. No, just really. to hang on to He's, it. <laughs> but they really are great cameras. Um, yep. Most of the time I have it plugged in USB because it's charging as it's streaming. Yep. But today I have it going through uh, my A10 mini as like a capture card, mm -hmm. which is overkill. But I was on a call earlier <laughs> today. Yeah. And I, but why not? I mean, why wouldn't you? <laughs> if, if you, you have, have it, it, you should use if it. You have it, use it. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Hey, Anna's here. Oh, someone amazing Anna. designed these titles and these overlays for us. We don't know who, but um, we but have she's no great. Idea. <laughs> she's and David amazing. says to test, test, test again. Yeah, really, yes. we're we're all cheering for you, and nothing breaks our heart worse than when we get a support ticket where there's literally nothing we can do to help because it's it's too late. The the answer was you needed to have tested that, and then we would have been able to help you solve it up front. But because you didn't, like, we can't we can't fix it. So we want to be able to fix yeah. it. So test. If you test and you're like, wow, this is going horribly wrong test into the ecam community and ask for help test and say like yeah. hey i don't know why this is happening you, we've all Can been someone, there yeah I, i've made late night calls i've been like i can't I, why is this not <laughs> plugging in <laughs> i need this to work tomorrow i need this to work so I, we've been there you're not doesn't matter how long you've been at this um we all yeah. we all catch something or there's some weird camera setting that turned itself on and we're like what happened there what so is it, that it happens. <laughs> it happens to, yep. the, to the best of us. And it. having redundancies, like I've got, what, what do I have right now? Hold on. I've got this main camera, mm -hmm. but I've been using it a lot today and I don't know how the battery is and I don't have it plugged in. Like a, um, I don't have the um, dummy yeah. battery. Yep. So I have my Canon oh, 80D oh, as a backup fancy. side camera. I don't like, like I'm not lit well for this one, <laughs> but, um, yeah. but anyways, like having redundancies, even if it's, a not a big deal stream mm -hmm. well for me i'm working with my mac mini mm -hmm. and my monitors here but i don't have a built-in webcam so if my camera goes like i don't have any backup so i i will always have a backup for my video and for yeah. my audio even when we were doing live streaming like hockey for the first time i had the cheapest as wide as I could get a webcam plugged into my um, computer in case the ATEM broke. Yeah. Because I had all of my cameras going into the ATEM and I was nervous about that because mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, if this goes down or if a kid walks by and steps on the power cable because I can't control my setting all the way, like that could happen. I still wanted to have a, a visual out there. So yeah. like being a little anal retentive about like but what's the backup to the backup like if that breaks yeah. like i'm even strategic about what i have plugged into my uh hardwired into my mac mini mm -hmm. and what's hardwired into my cal digit yeah and then my other usb yep. coming out of my mac mini so like my cameras are actually talking to my computer in two different ways mm -hmm. so if the cal digit goes down which could happen Joel's or my other usb down. goes down the stream is i am never, never down <laughs> mine I'm might go down but Joe will be here forever <laughs> i learned that i learned the hard way and i will i will try to dig up some uh, i've been trying to be more candid on my on my linkedin on my linkedin profile but i've been sharing kind of like my some of my earlier live streams um and one one of my favorite moments ever was I was I was doing a I was doing an interview with Kevin Colby, um, who is an amazing photographer and videographer. And he, I screwed up in two ways during this very Ooh. brief interview, in which I was interviewing him. So you would think that I would yeah. be better planned, but I just wasn't thinking, and I didn't do a test, and I was newer to the whole thing. The first was. I was waiting. Oh, no, sorry. Excuse me. I was the guest and he was host. So it's slightly less bad, but still totally my fault. <laughs> slightly <laughs> the first less was, bad. The first was I was waiting um, to, I was in the green room and I was waiting for the show to start and the countdown timer was like almost done. And I was like, oh, I left my, I left my headphones downstairs and I need those to be able to sound my best. And so I ran downstairs like a crazy person to get my headphones. <laughs> and when I came back up, the show had started and it was just my empty chair. It was like our special guest this chair <laughs> <laughs> so so first fail there and then I got back on camera and we laughed about how silly it was and I was like I have my headphones and we're talking about video production and professionalism and I'm like on my and then my camera just died because I had charged it but it 
went through the battery faster than normal. It was an older camera and I didn't have a dummy battery and I didn't have it plugged in and I didn't. <laughs> so I just froze. And then I, and I had no backup camera because I was in my home studio. I wasn't in the office. So it went automatically just froze in like the ugliest possible, like of my face. And then it went, and then it, I had to tur- panic, turn that off to not look horrible. And then I, the only other option I had was my FaceTime camera, which Potato on that cam. computer, yeah, I looked horrible. So <laughs> I've, um, I've been there and we laughed our way through it and we used it as a learning lesson and it was it was a good experience, but I remember that. And that was, you know, a couple of years ago now, but I, I, I remember it vividly. And every time I go, I'm like, is this camera plugged in? Do I need extra backup cables sitting nearby me? Do I have another camera option? Like, is the, does, you know, Kevin know that I'm going to run downstairs to get headphones <laughs> so that he doesn't put me on screen? I, you know, all of these different things mm-hmm. are important. There's like, it's still going to happen. I'm still going to make mistakes here and there, but, but having that plan up front and being aware of what can go wrong is really, you know, incredibly important in all of it. For sure. Doc, you're right that Sony's don't need dummy batteries. Yeah. Use a power mini brick. Mm -hmm. So what I have found though, is that the battery, um, on the Sony, if I'm, if I'm using it too much, it'll say battery exhausted. (laughs) Which is how I feel after too much like, long no. live stream. Yeah. Battery's exhausted. Needs a break. Yeah. So there are times where um yeah, where like the the Sony's just like, yeah, no, that that's too much. <laughs> We're it's done. too much. We're done. I think maybe if I maybe I should just turn down the brightness on the screen. Like maybe that would save some of that yeah. battery. You know what I mean? Just think yeah, about probably. That yeah. Yeah, that might be. We are nearly um, the end yeah. and I wanna how be does able that happen? to I know it goes by really, really fast. Um, we, if you have any questions, we will absolutely take questions, throw a Q colon in front of them so that we can find them. I'm sure our moderators will run that down, but we have a bunch of stuff upcoming. So I just wanted to throw quickly over to, um, Adrian Salisbury is doing a master zoom in a weekend. So if you're like, I just want to be able to use zoom and Ecamm together and none of it's making sense. And people told me it would work. We're here to help Friday, (laughs) Saturday, Sunday. Um, this is a three, three day intensive workshop uh, but there are replays always available so adrian salisbury.com slash zoom we'll get you into that one and then next week doc is going to teach me how to use audio so if you want to learn Ooh. audio with us i finally you- got loop back <laughs> yay there you go there you go jill can join us and, and share all of her all of her microphones we're gonna have laura on from sure so we're gonna have a lot of fun and this is we're actually gonna do this in our ecamm town hall so i will i will go back and drop the link in um, if our moderators don't have it here for you but um this will not be live streamed we're we're gonna see your lovely faces we're gonna let you play around and mess up with audio with us so it should be uh, a good time but we'll release videos afterwards so that you still have a replay if you can't make it but that's next week and then if you're in San Diego, come hang out with us. I'm planning a really fun party. I, you know, Ken and Glenn are very insistent that we need to have fun drinks and food and snacks and the whole shebang. So we're going to be um, in San Diego for Social Media Marketing World on March 13th. We're doing an ECAM meetup. And then we're actually doing a full live streaming studio and lounge with a coffee bar. We're going to be doing workshops all day Monday, the 14th. 9 to 4 p.m. as well. So if you are in San Diego, you want to be in San Diego, you're going to Social Media Marketing World, you should absolutely come and hang out with us. But those are all the upcoming things that I'm aware of. I'm bad for just adding things on. So. Katie, if Sorry. you need a chaperone to that <laughs> I event. Might. I might. If you need a si- – if I, th- all right. Put in the you, comments, guys, if you, you think Katie <laughs> and Jill should go on this trip together. I mean – I've got miles on my yeah. American Airlines. Yeah, yeah, you might need to come. My, the um, FOMO, and yeah, it, the whole the most of the team. I shouldn't say the whole team because not the whole team is coming. But um, but Doc and I and Ken and Glenn and Midori, who handles our customer support team, are all going from the ecam side. And then we have Anna and Fulgens and Adrian and Diana and Nikki Saunders is going to be there and Luria and Stephanie and J- I, literally there are so You're many people that live in salt San Diego in and <laughs> Jill is going to come and Jill is going to come <laughs> we're going to figure out a way to get Jill there as well but yeah no it should be fun <laughs> if you're like I don't live there Katie I get you and we looked up our customer list turns out a lot of you live in Texas and Florida 
So we see you. Wow. We see you. We're heading to Texas in August for podcast movement. So we will be nice. planning that um, coming soon. Nothing says summer like like Texas and heat and podcasting. So <laughs> we will be there as well. So more to come. But we, um, we're working on getting out more in front of all of you and being able to answer your questions and host some fun activities. So. That's um, awesome. Yeah, lots of people saying that you should come. Lots of people saying that you I should come. Anna reminding me that Valentine's Day is Monday and we have Ooh. some fun stuff on ENN because Monday, ENN, Valentine's Day. <laughs> so it's, we would it's love perfect. to see you there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just going through to see here. Oh, actually, see, look, thing- James is going too. Ah, yes. I got to get my act yes. together. Jill, you've got to come. Yep. Strix says right. you've got to come together. Yes. Every, everyone needs to be there. <laughs> um, Rick is reminding me that uh, if you are a loopback user, cover your ears, Jill, since you just signed up. <laughs> but if you are a loopback user, uh, we did just roll out virtual right. microphone of our own beta. into beta. Uh, the other thing that's big and really fun in the beta right now is uh, shortcuts. And by shortcuts, I don't mean like the hotkeys that Doc is incredible at. I mean, actual Apple shortcuts, which are a newer feature to the to the newer operating systems um, in Apple. Doc's going to correct me because I never get the numbers right. But one of the newer operating systems in Apple <laughs> has what are called shortcuts. But what's really cool, and we've been playing around with this. Uh, I wish I had my backup camera to show you. I'll, I'll get it. I'll I'll get a video going. But the um, what you're able to do is actually trigger like a series of events. So I op- when every time my Ecamm Live opens, it automatically puts my phone into Do Not Disturb, turns on all of my lights and camera, wow. turns on my fun live light in the background, helps me trigger sound effects and my blah, blah, blah. All of these really cool um, triggers that you can set up using Apple Shortcuts and Ecamm now exist. It is in beta and we are like really excited to see what crazy fun automations and things that you're all going to come up with. So uh, play along with us. If you have a fun thing that you've made Ecamm and your computer do using shortcuts, we'd love to know. If you're like, I'd like to do this and I don't think that's there yet, let us know. We're playing around with it. So (laughs) we'd love to hear everyone's suggestions and thoughts. I'm just scrolling through now to see if we have any other questions. Glenda wants to solve audio issues. Don't worry, Glenda. We have a workshop. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And if you go to, let me see if I can drop Junaid's thing in here. Yeah. If you um, go to Junaid's group today, I did a demo on seven different audio options. Oh, that's not going to help. Well, actually, I mean, it'll give the, we'll send you the replay links, but ecam. TV slash studio build is the um, that is the add event calendar to add the remaining events to your calendar. But the, uh, we will also send an email follow up with where cool. you can access the group and and watch Jill's watch Jill's session. <laughs> Dory's, Dory's, is Dory, 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 Dory's my Dory's my roomie and my chaperone. It's gonna be awesome. I'll, I'll be your bag. I'll carry your stuff. <laughs> I carry your bags. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you need to come and have fun. You're not allowed uh, to carry bags. Oh, there we go. Doc said it's in um, Monterey. So there we go. Up on screen. Um, yeah. Cool. We're at that time, but awesome. we'll be back again next week. The following week, I'm out of town. So maybe Jill, maybe you have a special, maybe Doc and Jill Ooh. take over. We'll see. Who should be Doc Jill's Jill. Katie? <laughs> not next week but the week after <laughs> let us know or if you want to join and talk about a fun topic um live from your test studio <laughs> let us know we'd love to we'd love to figure that out so yeah thanks for hanging out jill awesome. it's always fun yeah thank you i was looking forward to this all day yay and we'll follow up and make jill share her fun planning documents and run of show and all that kind of stuff so that you can yeah. grab those awesome All right. Well, that's it for us. We will see you all next week. Thank you so much for all of your questions. Thanks for hanging out with us as always. Thanks, Jill. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. Bye. (laughs) I don't know my music on anymore. There we go.